In this lesson, we will be looking at static electricity. Static electricity is the accumulation of electric charge on the surface of objects. Static electricity can build up in our bodies and cause a spark to jump from our bodies to pieces of metal or even other people's bodies. The spark is a form of static discharge. So how does static electricity build up? Let me explain it to you. All matter is made up of atoms. Inside the atom, there is the nucleus. The nucleus consists of neutrons and protons. Neutrons do not have any charge, but protons have a positive charge. Apart from the neutrons and protons in the nucleus, there are also electrons orbiting around the nucleus. Electrons carry a negative charge. The magnitude of the charge of a proton and electron is the same. Normally, matter is neutrally charged, meaning that the number of protons and electrons are the same. If a matter loses some of its electrons, there will be more protons compared to electrons, and the matter will be positively charged. If a matter gains some electrons, the number of protons will be lesser than the number of electrons and thus, the matter will be negatively charged. Electrons can be exchanged between materials on contact. This is known as the triboelectric effect and results in one material becoming positively charged and the other negatively charged. Some materials hold on to the electrons more tightly than others. How strongly a material holds on to its electrons determines its place in the triboelectric series. If a material is more likely to give up electrons when in contact with other material, it is more positive in the triboelectric series, for example, our hands. If a material is more likely to attract electrons on contact, it is more negative in the triboelectric series, for example, Teflon. The largest amount of induced charge will result from materials being in contact that are at the extreme ends of the triboelectric series. The further the separation in the series, the greater the induced charge. So what happens if both materials in contact are from the positive side of the triboelectric series? Then the material with the greater ability to generate charge will become positive. For example, when we rub our hands against silk, our hands will become positive, whereas the silk will become negative. Similarly, if both materials are from the negative end of the triboelectric series, the one with the greater ability to attract electrons will become negatively charged. When two bodies having unequal charges are near each other but not touching, an electric force is exerted between them because of their charges. Their charges cannot equalize since the two bodies are not in contact and current cannot flow. This electric force is known as electrostatic force. Bodies with unlike charges will attract each other, whereas bodies with like charges will repel each other. Let's take a look at a simple experiment which can be easily conducted. We will need a sheet of plastic. This sheet of plastic can be easily found on your lecture notes. The second thing we will need is an empty can. Alright, firstly, rub the sheet of plastic against your arm. By doing so, electrons are being transferred from our arm to the sheet of plastic and thus causing the sheet of plastic to be negatively charged. Next, place the empty can horizontally on a flat surface and bring the charged plastic sheet near it but without touching it and see what happens. The empty cans are attracted to the charged sheet of plastic and roll towards it. This is because the empty cans are neutrally charged. Thus, it is more positive than the negatively charged sheet of plastic. So, when they are brought close to each other, they tend to move towards each other due to the electrostatic force of attraction. 
This is the same for strips of tissue paper. When you bring the negatively charged sheet of plastic close to the neutrally charged strips of tissue paper, the strips of tissue paper will get attracted to the plastic, just like this. Although static electricity can be fun to play with, but electrostatic discharge can actually damage ICs and printed circuit boards. Special precautions must be taken when handling, transporting, fitting, and removing electrostatic sensitive devices. Some of these precautions include the use of anti-static wrist strap. The wrist strap is connected to ground and prevents electrostatic discharge by grounding the user. The insertion and removal tools used, such as the pliers and screwdrivers, are also anti-static. Lastly, an anti-static bag is used for transporting electrostatic sensitive devices. These are some of the many precautions that are meant to protect the devices from harmful electrostatic discharge. With this, we have come to the end of the lesson on static electricity.